Two famous stories in the Torah portion this week feature two famous symbols. We have heard about the first one, the story of the great flood. At its end, God puts a rainbow in the sky as a sign of his promise that he will never again destroy the earth. Rainbows will now be a sign of the covenant between God and all living creatures. That's our first symbol. The second story and symbol is that of the Tower of Babel. The Torah tells us that the earth's people were united with one language and one purpose. They build a tower up to the heavens, some say to encroach on God's domain. This abuse of power infuriates God, and he responds not with a flood, but by dispersing mankind across the globe. This guarantees that we may always be united in our humanity, but we are going to be diverse. As a result of God's actions, we have evolved in every corner of the earth with differing ethnicities, habitats, customs, foods, languages, and so on. Thus, God's resolution of the Tower incident teaches us unity doesn't have to be uniform. Diversity and unity often coexist. When we started the Center for Exploring Judaism here at Central over 10 years ago, we began with the premise that the Jewish community would be stronger for welcoming anyone who wanted to join us. We'd be stronger by viewing intermarriage as an amazing opportunity rather than a threat. Most of all, we'd be stronger if we could celebrate the immense diversity that would pour into our community through the center. And that's exactly what we've done. In the past 10 years, we have welcomed and taught about 500 couples. We have officiated 300 conversions and even more weddings. And as you saw, we are happily welcoming the Jewish children of these marriages into our midst. We are all unified under the banner of Judaism, but each of us is practicing and believing in our own unique and meaningful way. We would never attempt, as our ancestors did, to circumscribe Jewish life into a single ideological, cultural, or social norm. We teach students there is no one way into Judaism, and there is not one way to be Jewish. We tell them, look, we hope that you'll feel a kinship with every other Jew, but don't expect an immediate, deep, personal connection with every Jew you meet, any more than you would with any New Yorker or American you meet. We tell our couples, you will be united in a Jewish marriage that is unique to the two of you, a beautiful combination of traditional Jewish practices and the cultural background that you bring. You are united, but distinct. See and respect each other's differences, and you can incorporate them into a fuller realization of the very best that your family can be. In our center, every conversion candidate writes their story before officially joining the community. Reading hundreds of these spiritual autobiographies over the years has given me and my colleagues an appreciation that Jewish souls come in very unique packages. None of our students begin with their essays with birth into a Jewish family, but all of them end with a love for and commitment to Judaism. Diversity within unity. Allie and Calvin, whose daughter Eden we just named, are a terrific example of this. Allie, Jewish from Long Island, meets Calvin, born Catholic, the son of Vietnamese immigrants. Lucky for us, Calvin falls in love with Allie and Judaism and decides to become Jewish himself. I said it at their wedding, and I'll say it here today. Our community is stronger for their presence, and the world is better for their union. Every conversion candidate also chooses and completes a project of their choice. One student, Mark, presented us a thorough and fascinating history of the Maccabiah Games in Israel. He and his fiancée, Zara, and her family, also jewels in the crown of our community, came through the center and will be called up in a few moments for their pre-wedding blessing. Yet another amazing contribution I have to share because I see her in attendance. Kimmy Scotty researched how to make haroset from five different communities around the world and wrote a cookbook. 
Every Passover, when I make one of her recipes, I am reminded we Jews have always been a diverse group. Since there has been a diaspora, there has been diversity. Before the holidays, Rabbi Bookdahl focused one, on her, one of her sermons on the fact that Moses' wife is of African descent. She shared the statistic that it is believed in the American community that up to 15% of Jews are Jews of color. That's one in seven. That's one million Jews. And in the Center for Exploring Judaism, we mirror that statistic almost exactly as we welcome students from all over the world. Before the flood of ancient days, our ancestor Noah gathered all the creatures of the earth, two by two, all the beasts of the land, all the birds in the sky, and invited them into the ark, and they weathered the storm. Our Jewish community will continue to weather our storm successfully precisely because of the diversity of our community. And after every storm, we know we sung about it, there is a potential rainbow, reminding us not only of God's promise, but that we are at our best and most beautiful when we band together. And after the Tower of Babel, God did not punish that generation. He saved them and us from another great catastrophe. In the millennia since then, humanity has been enriched by the countless communities around the world and strengthened by the interchange of their best practices. In today's world, both religious and secular, we are more productive, innovative, creative, and thoughtful when we have new perspectives and stories around the table. We are greater than the sum of our parts, and the Center for Exploring Judaism and Central Synagogue are the very best examples of this. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>